So good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for being here today. Uh, we welcome to this press conference on the PJ's global campaign against plastic pollution and single, single plastic, or single use plastic, shall we say, yes. And then uh, we are joined today by the President of the General Assembly, Her Excellency Maria Fernanda Espinosa, also His Excellency Mr. Marlon Joseph, who is the Minister of Health, Wellness and the Environment, and they are coming. Uh, the Ambassador of Norway to the UN, Her Excellency Ms. Mona Ju. And uh, we also welcome today our special guest. Your Excellency, please take a seat at the table. So, yes, you're in the middle. Yes, and the minister there. Yes, thank you very much. Um, and we have our special guest today, Grammy Award winning singer, songwriter, and actress Ashanti. Thank you very much for being here today. So, the PGA and our guests, they will make opening remarks, and I would like to uh, acknowledge the presence as well um, of uh, His Excellency Ambassador Walton Alfonso Webson, who is with us today, Ambassador of Antigua and Barbuda to the United Nations. So the PJ and our guests will make some opening remarks, and after that, we will hand it over to you for your questions. It is my pleasure, ladies and gentlemen, to invite now the PJ to deliver her opening remarks. Madam President, you have the floor. Well, hello, everybody. And uh, I am so happy uh, today. Uh, this uh, uh, really is um, something that we've been working together with Antigua and Barbuda and Norway uh, to make sure that it happens. And finally, today, we, we can say proudly that it is happening, and it is happening in the, uh, with the presence of a very, very powerful role model. And uh, Ashanti, thank you. Thank you very much uh, for being part of this campaign and of this commitment uh, for a safer uh, and better planet for um, us all. Thank you for having me. So I want to be very, very clear. And uh, plastic pollution has very quickly and very urgently uh, become one of the defining issues of our times, and I am not exaggerating. While we have known for decades that plastic takes a long time to degrade, and we believe that recycling programs were addressing this gap, we now know that it has been far too little. An incredible amount of plastic has ended up in the oceans or other environments. In fact, the numbers should shock you. Every day, a dump truck full of plastic is dropped into the ocean, equaling up to 13 million tons per year in our oceans. Almost one trillion single-use plastic bags are used worldwide every year, one trillion. That's two million a minute. And the average time that a plastic bag is used for is, uh, for is just 12 minutes. And then we throw it away. So only 9% of plastics are, are recycled. Only 9% of the plastics are recycled. While most plastics are burned or persist, uh, persist for decades or longer, those that do degrade have turned into microplastics found everywhere from the depths of the sea to the peaks of mountains to our drinking water and to our skin even. My friends, and this is of course unacceptable, we are killing our planet, we are killing ourselves. Uh, as a response to this, um, I committed during my presidency of the General Assembly to supporting efforts that help to beat plastic pollution. This campaign is intended to complement existing campaigns from partners such as UN Environment, the IUCN, National Geographic, and build upon their efforts to raise awareness and to support the development of new technologies and new innovations. With this campaign, we have basically two key objectives, to raise awareness globally and to introduce change within the UN headquarters so that we walk the talk. 
The concert that we are about to launch in Antigua and Barbuda reflects the first part of that campaign and is aimed at raising awareness and educating people globally. Our view is that plastic pollution must be tackled from all angles, through cleanup campaigns for sure, but also through more sustainable consumption and production. For that to happen, consumers and producers must learn about alternatives and what they can do, whether on the supply chain or in the checkout line, to reduce the amount of plastics that are ending up in our oceans, in our rivers, in our mountains, in our wildlife, and in ourselves. In addition to the concert, I am very proud to say that together with the Secretary General, we have agreed to address the issue of plastic here within the UN. While a lot of progress has already been made, such as the elimination of plastic straws, for example, more remains to be done. Further details of that will follow, and I promise you will follow. With that, I will hand over to Minister Joseph to talk about Antigua's plans for this concert. And once again, thank you to this uh, great partnership with the government of Antigua and Barbuda, to um, Ambassador Webson for, for his sustained uh, commitment, uh, and uh, the Ambassador of Norway, the government of Norway, for this, uh, for uh, its unwavering support to make this happen. And Ashanti, of course, uh, again, we're privileged to have you uh, with us in, in this collective effort. So thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Good morning to everyone. I uh, bring you warm greetings from the sunny and beautiful island state of Antigua and Barbuda. I bring you greetings from the Prime Minister and the entire government and people of Antigua and Barbuda. It is such a pleasure to be here today. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the pleasure of being the Minister of Health, Wellness, and the environment. So I'm keenly aware of the relationship between human living and the environment. There is an inextricable link between both. Man cannot live healthy without ensuring a healthy environment. For a small island state, our consumption of single-use pl plastic items, considering that we are only approximately 100,000 in population, was in the millions of bags. When my government emphasized the proper disposal of waste and passed anti-littering legislation, it was obvious that those measures were not enough. The problem was too large and beyond the scale of Antigua and Barbuda. We have all seen the images of animal life being impacted by plastics, from whales to turtles to the very fish that we consume. The ocean is now polluted. Marine life has been destroyed. Our consumption of plastic from the ocean is in effect killing us too. We are literally eating and drinking plastic on a daily basis. There is a recent image being shared on social media regarding the discovery of a sea of plastics in the Caribbean Sea that stretches miles and miles and is choking our sea life. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not okay. This can never be okay. We have seen a movement of young people from across the globe. And they're sending a message that this generation must not pass on to the next generation an environment any less than it inherited. Collectively, we must do more. We have to do more. And this is why the government of Antigua and Barbuda is pleased to join the president of the General Assembly, Maria Fernanda Espinosa and the government of Norway in bringing attention to the harmful effects of plastics by convening this international concert, playing music to play out plastics. We are also thankful 
that the talented superstar and Grammy Award winning artist Ashanti, along with Michelle Montana of Trinidad and Tobago, will headline this event. From the short period of meeting her, she is the perfect ambassador for getting this message across. While we talk plastics and global policies, let us do this while having fun. Music allows us to bring this type of message and profile to the world's attention. Antigua and Barbuda was the first country in Latin America and the Caribbean to enact strong legislation on the ban of single-use plastic and styrofoam. Several other Caribbean islands have since done the same. In Antigua and Barbuda, the import of these items are prohibited by law. We welcome the strong efforts by the government of Norway in leading this issue within the European Union and also the work of the President of the General Assembly in moving the UN system to be free from using single-use plastics. And we are very pleased with our joint collaboration on this important cause. We are all here doing our part. And so now we are charging you, the press, to go and do your part. Inform the world of the great concert that will take place in Antigua and Barbuda on June the 1st. Antigua and Barbuda is proud and honored to host this event, and we hope that this festival will bring international awareness to the harmful effects of plastics, not only to our nation, but to our environment generally. Finally, a sobering thought. Scientists estimate that more than 8 million metric tons of plastic is entering our ocean every year. If we don't act now, there could be more plastic than fish in the ocean by 2050. Marine debris is not an ocean problem. It is a people problem. We create the problem. We must find the solution. Let us all join together and act now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Minister Joseph, for your words. Madam President. No, it's Ambassador yeah, of Norway. We would like okay. to continue. Yeah, please, yes, yes okay. the Ambassador of Norway. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Um, oh, I cannot express how proud I am to uh, represent uh, my government uh, of Norway uh, and to join our friends and global leaders like the President of the General Assembly, the Minister from Antigua and Barbuda, and the very, very famous artist uh, Ashanti for this very noble cause to beat plastic pollution. Plastic pollution is one of the major <coughs> environmental issues for our common future all across the world. Maran litter is one of the fastest growing environmental concerns. Every minute, as has been said, 15 tons of litter goes into our oceans. It is a truly a global problem that requires global solutions and involvement from all states. Small island developing states like Antigua and Barbuda are more directly, directly vulnerable to these kind of environmental changes. So I'm so incredibly thankful that Antigua and Barbuda will host this Play It Out event. It will highlight not only the problems, but even more importantly, how we can prevent marine litter. Norway believes that we need an integrated approach to combine marine litter on a global level. We must pull in the same direction to achieve our ambition of zero discharge. We need stronger coordination, cooperation and coherence. In short, stronger governance at all levels. No country can solve this alone. The Caribbean is already a great example of successful cooperation. 
My hope is that this initiative will contribute to even closer cooperation on marine litter and inspire to concrete action to, combine, to combat it. A few weeks ago, Norway and the Nordic countries issued a declaration where we called out for the need of a global agreement on marine litter and microplastic. We will provide financial support to a report to inform decision make, making, sketching out the possi possible elements and approaches for a new global agreement on plastic. We want to stop plastic litter from entering the oceans. And I'm so much looking forward to play it out and to what we can achieve together. So thanks to all of you once again. Ambassador uh, Ju for uh, speaking to us uh, today. Now we are going to hear from our special guest, the Grammy Award winning singer, songwriter and actress, Miss Ashanti Douglas. Well, thank you. Thank you for that intro. Hello, guys. I am so happy to be here. Thank you guys so much for inviting me. This is an amazing cause, and I'm just really excited. You know, it's really funny. I was just in St. Martin about three days ago. And it was 85 degrees, and I had this beautiful villa, and there was a saltwater pool. So me and my crew, we stayed in the pool for the first day, and the second day, we went to the beach. And the beach was called, I think, Karakta Beach. And it was amazing. It's like the sand was like baby powder. The ocean was like blue Kool-Aid. I probably stayed in the water a little bit more than I should have, <laughs> um, but I had an amazing time. But the reality is that is just the surface, you know? Um, I had such a good time, and then coming back and understanding all of the problems that we're having with plastic in our ocean, it's very, very disheartening. You know, just to understand the statistics, and my good friends here have told you guys about all of the details and the numbers, and it really is disheartening. You know, so the fact that we are killing our planet and we're killing our animals, and it's kind of our fault, we have to fix it. You know, I don't have kids yet, but I want my babies to be able to swim in the ocean, you know, without worrying about being poisoned. You know, we're poisoning our planet, we're poisoning ourselves, and I think that causing awareness is the way to go. You know, I'm blessed enough to love music, and, and I have a couple of cool songs, and, um, you know, I'm just really excited to be able to participate to just get the message out there you know we don't think about the fact that oh I'm just gonna use a straw today and throw it out five minutes later oh, I just had a plastic bag I just put a couple of things and throw it out we don't realize how that affects us on such a magnitude you know a big level you know and if there's millions of people doing that around the world you can only imagine what's going on you know in the ocean and it's it's like it's not the animals fault you know so I feel like it's really really important for us to just come together as a people and make a big change um, I'm the type of person that likes to jump off boats, you know, and, and swim and do cannonballs and all that kind of stuff. So um, when I got the opportunity to be up here, I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is like right up my alley. We have to fix this because I like the ocean, you know. So I just want to say thank you guys so much um, for allowing us to be here. Thank you guys for coming together to create this amazing opportunity and this platform. And I wanna be a part of something that's gonna change. You know, I think music is awesome, but to be able to change lives and to be a part of something that's going to change our future and the future for our children, I think is pretty cool. So thank you guys so much for having me. Thank you very much, Ashant. We're going to now open for questions, open the floor uh, for questions. I will start with Evelyn, afterwards I have Joe, and then we go on. Evelyn, please, go ahead. Thank you for the briefing. Most interesting. Evelyn Leopold, I welcome you on behalf of the United Nations Correspondents Association. Um, what do you hear from the United States, one of the biggest polluters? Uh, the US has taken some of its own action against oceans, but do you expect any participation in <clears throat> Ambassador Jewell's suggestion of a, of a, of a new um, uh, global action against plastic, considering what it thinks of any kind of multinationalism? And the question goes to Evelyn. 
the question goes to to whom? Uh, uh, the PGA. Okay, the PGA. Ambassador Drew. Okay. Okay. And I would love to go down to <laughs> oh, please, please. Oh, <laughs> this minute. And please, please do come because uh, it's going to be really, really, uh, you know, a s historical moment um, for us uh, to commit to beat plastic uh, pollution in our oceans. Well, uh, regarding um, you know, decisions to go into a, a, a binding uh, instrument or mechanism, I think that uh, there is, uh, I see a, a growing momentum and, and commitment from um, different member states. Uh, you know, let's uh, just uh, remember that we, we just had uh, the UN Environment Assembly um, in, uh, in Nairobi, you know, a few weeks ago, and there were already two uh, resolutions uh, that were passed by member states. Was it two, Hannah? Two, two resolutions um, where uh, several member states uh, endorsed and supported. So this can be seen perhaps as a first step and, and uh, perhaps uh, Ambassador of Norway can share uh, with us some you know, further and follow-up actions uh, that they're uh, thinking about. Yeah, no, I, I think the, uh, the the president is is very correct. I think there is such a growing <coughs> awareness now of of the problem, uh, and awareness is good. But we also need to go into the action phase, and uh, and I think that is what uh, what uh, what what we uh, as Norway is uh, at least willing, and I think able by by being joined by 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 other countries to. Uh, to spearhead the kind of an effort that can lead to some more sort of binding uh, agreements. Uh, I mean, we have we we it, it will take time. It will not be done uh, tomorrow, and it needs a transition. Uh, process that we have to go through both as individuals, countries, businesses, but but I certainly think that we are on on the right track and and it's getting more and more more and more uh, support and I think it's very encouraging because this has all about climate change and and uh, and and what sort of is going on with our globe and and the engagement by the young people these days, not least in in in, in my part of the world where, where where young kids drop out from school and goes to the street and ask for action to save the planet, uh, I think gives us a lot of hope that we can uh, really do something now. Yeah, p perhaps just for the record, and thank you, thank you, Ambassador, because really Norway has been, uh, you know, at the forefront uh, and inspired, you know, many other countries to follow. But uh, 127 countries have taken action on single-use plastic bags. Mm. 127. 27 countries on single-use plastics in general, 27, and eight countries on microbeads, or what we call the microplastics. And I think one of the, of the really commendable examples is the Caribbean initiative mm -hmm. to beat plastic pollution. And I, that's why, you know, the, uh, the role of the Caribbean in general and the role of Antigua and Barbuda in particular is so important, is bringing the words into action and walking the talk. That's what we're trying to do here in-house as well. Thank you, Madam President. Joe Klein, and then I have uh, you there. Okay, I've got everyone. Okay, Joe, yes. go ahead. Uh, Joseph Klein of Canada Free Press. Um, I just want to bring some data into this discussion because according to a study cited by the UN Environmental Organization itself, just 10 river systems carry about 90% of the plastic that ends up in the oceans. Eight of those rivers are in Asia, two in Africa, and a study cited by Earth Day Network uh, indicates that amongst the top waste generation sources, um, eight out of the top ten are in Asia. So I'd like to ask, and I understand this is a global problem, and I commend uh, your initiatives in this area, uh, but to what extent are you seeking to actively engage the Asian countries that are listed as some of the primary sources of, the, of, of plastic waste generation? And uh, how come, for example, none of them are, are represented uh, here? Uh, thank you. Uh, that would be, uh, 
That would be uh, aimed specifically at the President of the General Assembly, but anyone else who wants to comment as well. Yeah, well, the data you have shared with us is very accurate. It comes from UN Environment, and it means that we shouldn't focus only in the ocean part. The ocean is the the last, uh, you know, the last space where then uh, all the plastics and microplastic uh, end up. But it all comes from rivers, mountains. It's you know, plastics and and plastic pollution is not only in the ocean, but it, it, it's everywhere. Uh, how to engage more countries? Uh, and of course, the idea is to raise awareness worldwide. Uh, this uh, concert has also that intention because it's not going to be, you know, in Antigua for Antiguans. It, it is going to be, uh, you know, seen uh, worldwide. Uh, it's very important to engage uh, younger generations. Uh, that's why Ashanti is so important because she has, um, you know, millions of followers and it's very important that she is the visible face of what we can do as citizens. In terms of the intergovernmental process, I mentioned uh, the two resolutions that came out of uh, the UN Environment Assembly. One of the uh, leading countries together with Norway, th with the Nordic countries, with the European uh, Union just passed recently, uh, you know, a directive uh, regarding plastic pollution, but uh, countries such as India were also behind uh, that commitment. So the commitment, the number of countries engaged and involved and committed is also expanding. Of course, this initiative, uh, it's uh, the countries here, but uh, the, the intention is uh, to broad uh, the basis of support and engage uh, uh, more countries in this global campaign, but uh, more importantly, in taking uh, the actions on time and taking you know, the decisions that need to be made. But uh, let me just mention and praise India for its commitment. Let's go to the back before okay. we come uh, here to Masood and Mr. Abadji. Yes, please Thank go you. ahead. Yes. Thank you. Um, uh, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Jordan Degamsim from Jordan Daily Newspaper at the store. My question is for both um, the beautiful Ashanti and to His Excellency Minister of Environment and Awareness. Uh, first to, uh, I, I don't know to call you princess or amazing, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, you, you spoke about change. Uh, you want to be part of the change of our life and if you can just explain what do you mean by change of our life and what do you expect uh, the outcome of your concert and uh, for you your excellency you said the problem uh, is not the ocean problem this is a people uh, problem and the people uh, has to fix it uh, do you mean governments or you, you mean people and and can you be clear if you want to finger point the finger on on some governments that actually doing more damage to oceans than others, because in Jordan we have only one one sea which is dead for 5,000 years ago. So <laughs> I'm sure you're not talking about Jordan, but so thank you so much anyway. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Let's get one more question. Shanti, before we okay. answer that one. Okay, Masood, go ahead and then I'll go back to you. Masood, please, your question thank before you. we answer. Uh, yes. Ambassador, yes, uh, my name is Masood, I represent the Dawn newspaper of Pakistan. I just want to know from you, because about these uh, garbage patches in Pacific Ocean, in the Indian Ocean, which are of, of course being created by these uh, what you call plastics and all kinds of debris which are dumped in the ocean by us, of course. Uh, so what is it that these countries which are involved in, whether the Indian Ocean or the Pacific, or the uh, Atlantic Ocean, and who have created these garbage patches. What are those uh, nations, countries doing specifically about these things? You and the minister in the PG. Go ahead. Okay, Thank you. so what I mean by change is being able to make a change in the fact that we are polluting our planet. So if we can come up with a way to stop with plastic period. Stop the plastic straws, stop plastic bags, stop, stop plastic water bottles, and allow people to adopt a different way of life so that our animals and our oceans can survive. Like I said, I don't have children yet. I don't want to have to worry about, you know, my kids swimming in plastic. You know what I mean? So what I mean by change is us coming together as a people, as a nation, as a race, to make a change in how we treat our planet. You know, and with the concert, um, I feel like just 
for for us to be able to have the platform to reach millions and millions of people, I'm very blessed that people like to see me on stage. So hopefully they tune in and we'll be able to have an amazing party on stage, but give a message at the same time. So those millions of people that are tuning in to listen to our records, they'll be able to say, oh, I love that record. Oh, wow, but I didn't know that about the plastic. you know. And maybe that'll spark them to say, you know what? I'm not going to drink out of plastic water bottles anymore. I'm not going to use plastic bags anymore. So hopefully that's what I wish to accomplish. In Antigua, of course. <laughs> Thank you. The, it is a people's problem, but one needs to have the political will in each country to initiate the change. Fortunately for Antigua and Barbuda, our Prime Minister immediately embraced the request of the Ministry of the Environment to engage in a process of eliminating plastics and styrofoam from the environment. But the critical consideration is how you transition away from plastics and styrofoam. That is the critical answer that you must provide. And in Antigua, we were able to do this, to assist the people from transitioning. And within 12 months from the initial start, we were able to eliminate all the single-use plastic bags out of every supermarket on the island. Every restaurant now has basically transitioned from styrofoam you should not find a plastic straw. You, should, you would likely find a paper straw. So it can be done, but it requires the political will of the political directorate and collaboration with the people and the businesses. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Minister Joseph, we move on? OK, I have uh, Beto and Carla. OK. Um, thank you very much for th uh, this briefing. It's fascinating. I don't know that much about the plastic industry, but I wanted to ask, um, do you have any pushback from the plastic industry? From the time I was born, it seems everything in the world is made out of plastic. And also, for example, um, intravenous tubes, I think, in, in medicine and and... I mean, it's, it's used all the time all over the place. So where do you draw the line? Is there a substitute, for example, for the medical use of plastics? And also, the substitution of paper for plastics, there's also a problem with paper and the trees uh, that are needed to make it. So it's a complicated process, and, and but I'm mostly interested in whether the plastic industry has been pushing back against this. To Carla Betu, your question. Um, thank you. This question is for Ashante. I'm just wondering, as a U.S. concerned citizen, what is your message to the Trump administration, which does not believe in climate change and has drawn uh, the U.S. Uh, from the Paris Climate Agreement? Thank you. <laughs> okay. What? <laughs> <laughs> We have one more before we get the questions. Xinhua, go ahead, James. Thanks. Ma Jianguo from China and the Xinhua News Agency. And up to now, from PGA, what PGA said up to now is that it's raising awareness against the single-use plastic bags or the straws or everything. And we are very glad to see that within the UN headquarters, we have no, no more straws. And I find that even the plastic umbrella bag disappeared, which is good. But what we are doing here now is raising awareness. Do we, are we planning to have a kind of global agreement like what we did, the Paris Agreement against climate change on plastic bag? Thank you. OK. Perhaps I'll, and, and I'll give you the floor, and uh, what we want. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so let's just make it very simple. Your question is basically, what is, how do I feel about Trump's decision to be against climate change? Okay. Um, I hope that with these statistics and these details, the administration is able to see the facts and that we all just want to 
live in a clean environment and be positive and be healthy. <laughs> no. Very good. That's what I call a good diplomat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, definitely. You know, very, very quickly on the two issues. Uh, we are working hand in hand with the Secretary General to make sure that UN facilities are plastic free. And it's an incremental, it is a process. You have seen some changes already, and I'm very pleased because, uh, you know, we've, my office has been behind this with the support of the of Secretary General. No more straws. Uh, the idea is, is also replace 100% the single-use plastic bottles for water, and we will do, like, incremental improvements, not only here in headquarters, but in our, all our offices, in Geneva, in Vienna, in Bangkok. So we are working uh, on that. Regarding your question, I think it's very important to, to, to know that UN Environment, our specialized agency, has been working on the plastics issues for 20 years or so. And uh, to date, uh, 60 countries have already signed on the Clean Seas campaign to to fight marine plastic litter. It is a global campaign. It involves countries from different regions. And perhaps more importantly, you, you spoke about a pushback from the industry. <clears throat> it is important to know that we are talking about single-use plastics. If you say, but you know, let's uh, replace these by, by paper, we are talking about plastics that are not reused nor recycled. No, uh, the, the, the plastics that are, you know, affecting our oceans, affecting our rivers, etc. So uh, for that, we have also uh, undertaken a, a very strong and powerful campaign. It's called the New Plastics Economy Global Commitment. We, it's for and with the private sector. And so far, 250 companies have signed to, to that. And the members of the uh, Plastics Economy Global Commitment represent 20% of the world's plastic packaging businesses. So this is a very good start point. And uh, we have to understand it's, it, it's, you know, on the, it's for the well-being of humanity. And I think that there is also commitment from the private sector and from private companies as well. So we very much rely on them uh, to make the change that Ashanti was mentioning. Minister Joseph, please. Thank you. What, one of the strategies has to be uh, education. If the consumer makes the demand for safer products, then the manufacturers are likely to meet the consumer demand. And fortunately, in the United States, there is a very strong private sector, highly driven. And I believe, rather than some uh, totally relying on the polit polit political directorate, I think the private sector can drive this process as well. And with education of the consumer, because we have in Antigua and Barbuda today, people who go to restaurants and refuse to, get, uh, to be served in containers that are uh, uh, made of styrofoam. So the consumers have a very important part to play in this process. Um, we have to wrap up this press conference, but I think that we have a very quick and short question by Mr. Abadji. Please, go ahead. Thank you, mm -hmm. Monica. Thank you, Madam President okay. and the panelists for your presentation. You all indicated that there are several agents that would impact pollution problems in this planet. The producers, the consumers, the artists and journalists, the press. If you have to look at resp decisive responsibility which one of these agents we think will has the most potential role in changing the situation? <laughs> Ambassador I, 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 th I think I was about to say the question is, uh, is not uh, the right question because it's about <laughs> working together. Yeah. I think we all are important part of creating or making that uh, that that global coalition where everybody needs to de do its part. Oh, thank you very much. We have a, an opportunity, a very short opportunity, brief for, for photo op. Uh, but I would like to thank you very much, uh, His Excellency Minister Molwin Joseph, the Minister of Health, Wellness and the Environment. And I understand you have uh, a single uh, your closing well, remarks. Uh, I would just like to inform those of you I anticipate will be in Antigua. Um, 
the artist lineup. We have, of course, the ambassador Shanti. And <laughs> I can't wait. And uh, <laughs> Michelle Montano, Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, in the rock band, St. Lucia from uh, the US, Spanish Music Sensations, Bomba Estereo from Colombia, Rhythm and Bruce Group, Nico and Vince from Norway, African reggae star Rocky Dawuni from Ghana, the talented international DJ Robin Schulz of Germany, soca superstars Ricardo Jew and Claudette Peters from Antigua and Barbuda, the musically gifted world renowned Kenya Mason family from the UK of Antiguan parentage. And they played for the wedding of the Prince Harry and Meghan Markle last oh, year. Wow. And uh, we have even more to announce. So uh, I look forward to hosting you in Antigua and Barbuda. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Also, to the Ambassador of Norway to the UN, Her Excellency Miss Mona Drew, for being to, uh, here today with us. And of course, our Grammy award-winning singer, songwriter, and actress, Ashanti. Thank you very much. Thank you. And Thank our PJ, Her Excellency, Ms. Maria Fernandez Pinoza, whom now has the floor. Thank you. Oh, I do have the floor just to thank you all and uh, to ask you to do your part to support us, uh, you know, to, to help us uh, spreading the word about the concert, but ab about the campaign, um, you know, you, you have also, you are part uh, of this uh, uh, collective effort. So thank you for being here, thank you for supporting, and thank you for spreading the word to make sure that the concert is a success, the campaign is a success, and that uh, we change our uh, practices as consumers uh, as well. So thank, thank you very much. Thank you, and that concludes our press conference, the press conference of the PJA's global campaign against plastic pollution and single-use plastic. Thank you very much. I get a truck.